So people tend to get started in Candy Cross one of two ways. Um, the first is that they were a runner, so they got a dog who could go for runs with them. And the second is that they got a dog that had way too much energy and they figured the easiest way to burn that energy would be if they took up running and took their dog with them. So in my case, I was a runner first and I decided that I would get a dog that could go for runs with me. So I googled what breeds of dogs can train and run a full marathon and there were three main breeds that came up. A Vishla, a Weimaraner, and a GSP. And then I very scientifically decided that I was going to go with the Vishla because they were the smallest out of all three breeds mentioned and I also thought that they were the most visually appealing. <laughs> so that's how I ended up with my first dog, Penny. She is seven and a half now. Um, and sorry, my very bad dog keeps doing things slightly out of my frame of view so I don't actually know what he's doing. Yeah, so I got my very first Candy Cross dog with no intentions of doing Candy Cross. When I actually got Penny, I didn't even know what Candy Cross was. And I ran with her just in like a $20 harness from Pet Value and a hands-free leash. I eventually upgraded to a Roughwear front range harness and a slightly different but similar hands-free leash. And then one day, I don't even remember actually where I found out about it, but one day I was looking for something on the internet and I found Candy Cross. And I, thought, I looked forever for a website that would sell Candy Cross gear that was actually pretty because a lot of it is just like primary red, primary blue, black. Those are your harness color choices. And, uh, I knew we were never going to be good enough to win, so we at the very least needed very pretty gear so that when we lost at least we would have a pretty finish photo. So I ordered some gear, shout out to Nahawk Sports, you're the real MVP, it was beautiful, it fit perfectly, it has held up exceptionally well because my harness that I use is still the first one I ever bought um, and it looks brand new. And the first harness Penny ever got still washes perfectly clean and looks like the day it shipped to me. So I bought those things and I spent an embarrassingly long time trying to figure out how to A, put this kind of harness on a dog and B, put a harness on myself. And we went out for our first run and it is totally different than running with a dog when you just have the leash wrapped around your waist or are holding it in your hand. So it's kind of a hard thing to explain, but when your dog is running with you just and you're holding the leash either with your hand or it's wrapped around your waist, they are pulling you a little bit, but not effectively if that makes sense. Um, when you are actually wearing your own harness and it kind of like straps around your waist, it has two leg straps, and it has pulling points from like your ass cheeks and your hips. So when your dog pulls while you're in this, it actually lifts you up off of the ground and lets you take further strides. The first time I put on the harness and attached myself just a penny, I could not believe the difference just adding that simple harness made. It, she was still the exact same dog, she was still pulling the exact same amount, and it was unreal. Um, so once I had my full Candy Cross kit and I knew what it was like to run with it, I said to myself, it's time, let's register for an actual Candy Cross race. And I googled it, and there's none in Cape Breton, but there was one in Truro. So I packed up my dog, and my harness and her harness and our bungee cord and I also packed up my mother because I didn't want to go to my very first run alone and I made all of them come to Truro with me and we went to Truro and we had a blast and I was like this is so much fun I love this I'm gonna get a second dog and the kind people who were at that Candy Cross race were like 
do you want a second dog really? Do you want a harness sport dog? And I was like, sure. I have some requirements though. It has to be a female dog and she has to be under the age of two. And they were like, awesome, sounds great. And then, like, not even a week later, the sweet girl who put the Candy Cross run on sent me a message and she was like, hey, I think I found the perfect dog for you. It's a boy and he's not two, he's much older. And I was like, none of my requirements have been met by this dog, but proceed, show me a photo. And she showed me this photo. Hopefully there's a photo of Reginald on the screen right now, but I also don't know because I'm not sure I can do that yet with my editing software. And I was like, oh shit, he's really handsome. So at this point, I'm not even sure if my boyfriend knew that I was seriously looking for another dog or if it was just kind of something that I'd been saying the same way that I'd been saying I was looking for a second dog since we got Penny. But I said, okay, yep, put me in a chat with his owners. And his owners were like, hey, we're from Quebec. This is our dog. His name's Benoit. And I was like, cool. And I still wasn't 100% sold. And then they were like, he's very sweet, but he's neurotic. And he eats socks and dish soap, and he screeches like a banshee when you go to feed him. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like the dog for me. And the day after the Cabot Trail Relay in 2018, I made my friend Katie get in the car with me. I threw a crate in the back seat, and we drove to Truro to pick up my dog because Sarah had driven him all the way from Quebec. I think actually he went from Quebec to Maine and then from Maine to Truro. And then we got him in Truro and I was like, oh my God, he's so sweet. I love him. And we put him in the crate and we gave him a bone. And then we stopped at Swiss Chalet and ate pierogies while he hung out in the crate. So, good thing he just is a good dog in a crate, I suppose, because we didn't put much thought into that. So, we get home with Reginald. Sorry. We also renamed him from Benoit to Reginald. So we get home with Reginald, and we do the whole, like, oh, Penny, this is your new brother, and Penny's like, well, I hate him, and hey, Reginald, this is your new family, and he's like, I'm gonna, stress pace for the next three months and I was like this is gonna be so exciting it's gonna be like running with Penny but with a bigger dog and a trained dog so I <laughs> I put myself in a harness and I put his harness on and I start my run watch and um and Reginald's just attached to me, standing quietly. And my Garmin GPS clicks in, and I hit the button. And when you hit my Garmin, or maybe every Garmin, I don't really know, but when you hit my run watch, it makes a noise, like a little bloop. And that is the noise that tells you that you can go. And I guess that Reginald knows that noise, because when I hit that button, he ran to the end of the leash and almost tore me off of my feet while making a screeching noise um, and took off. And it was slightly downhill. <laughs> and that was almost where Reginald and my run career began and ended because it was <laughs> the most terrifying thing that's ever happened to me and I wish I had video of it. But basically, um, he was much stronger than Penny. It wasn't like running with Penny at all. And I had no idea how we were going to actually stop because I was pretty sure that he had much more stamina than me because I'm at one point my watch was reading like a 220 kilometer pace. Um, for some people, that's maybe a thing they can maintain. For me, I'm like a four minute kilometer pace girl. So, especially back then. So
so I was petrified. I was literally petrified. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't know how to stop him. I yelled various words at him that meant like slow down or stop in like French and English. And I also said, whoa, uh, which I know is from the horse world, but I thought that maybe it would work because like no other words were working. And um, nothing worked. So <laughs> the only saving grace was that it was kind of hot out and he's not very heat tolerant. So after like three kilometers, he slowed down enough that I could kind of like get my feet underneath me and uh, slow us down and stop us eventually. And so that was my first intro to what I'm going to go ahead and call serious candy cross. Okay, so when I say serious, all I mean is when my first run with Reginald happened, that was when I knew that I was a candy cross addict. I knew that for the foreseeable future, that was going to be the thing that I did with my free time and that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy yourself a dog that was made for harness sports in order to enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed it a ton with Penny. I really loved it with Penny. I went for that first run with Reginald and realized that I had a dog that was just as into going as fast as they possibly could as I was, it was a game changer for me. I loved every second of that terrifying first run with Reginald. Um, so if anyone has any questions about Candy Cross, leave a comment. That's the thing you're supposed to say when you have a YouTube channel, right? Leave a comment below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend. Um, I have no idea what I'm saying. Basically, this was me rambling about Candy Cross. If anybody actually wants informative information, let me know. Um, I definitely don't know everything, but I feel like a lot of people have no idea the sport even exists. So yeah, if you have any questions specifically about any parts of Candy Cross, um, let me know. And maybe I will do a, here's what people asked, and here are my answers video next. Alright Shelly.